Hi everybody, my name is Taylor and today we are going to talk about self-esteem and what that means. There are so many things I wish I'd have known when at a younger age or when I was a teen related to self-esteem. So creating this video, I hope that I can help you skip some of those hardships that I went through as a teen. This video will be in three parts. Um, the first part, we will explore what self-esteem is. The second part, we'll talk about the brain, self-esteem, and how they're related. And the third part, we'll give you some tips on how you can improve your self-esteem. If you're a teen or a young adult who is just trying to figure out what life is all about, then this is for you. Okay, so what is self-esteem? Some people will tell you it's about how you feel about yourself. I'm not so sure that's the entire definition of what self-esteem is. If you are a teen or a young adult with dreams or aspirations, self-esteem is critical. It's important to, to have and to know your self-worth. The real definition I feel that self-esteem is, is what you choose to accept based on your inner thoughts and voices of others. Okay? Inner thoughts are those voices you hear in your head. Sometimes they're positive, such as, I feel beautiful today, I am smart, I am lucky, I have good grades, I am kind, I'm a nice person. Sometimes the thoughts can be negative, such as, I feel stupid, I feel worthless, I feel that nobody loves me or cares about me. You want to know an exciting secret that you may not have realized before is that only you have the power of your own thoughts. Every time you have a negative thought, you have the power to change it or to reject it and create a positive one counteracting that. Typically, or more often than not, people depend on voices from others for their self-esteem. For example, People tend to reach for other people's opinions on themselves or how they think they might be for reassurance or acceptance from others. I'll give you an example. Um, one person might not feel beautiful unless their significant other or friend said, you're beautiful today. Um, one might not feel that they're smart because their teacher or friend didn't say they were smart that day. Or maybe the opposite, um, you might think you're funny because your peers said you were funny. One thing to always remember is that your outside factors always change. People change. Um, they One day your friend can say, you don't look very pretty. And the other day they can say you look pretty. So you can't always rely on what other people feel about you or think of you to... Um, set your self-esteem and how you feel you are worth. Those with great self-esteem can always fall back on those positive inner thoughts when negative thoughts are trying to enter their mind. I'll tell you this, you can't control the outside. You can't control what people are going to think and say about you. Only you have the power to control your inner thoughts. What are some voices from others that might affect you? Parents, teachers, friends, family, more than often social media. And just remember, you are in charge and can overpower any negative thoughts with positive ones. So if your parents are saying things that might make you feel down about yourself, just try to remember something positive they once said about you if you're feeling down. If your teachers are kind of giving you a hard time and you don't feel that you're confident in school, remember that one time when you got a really good grade or you did really well and your teachers gave you uh, a praise for that. Um, friends, family, there there's going to be times when negative things come, but there's also positive things. So you just got to do your best to try to block out the negative things and think of the positive inner thoughts. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick scenario. Tanya and Jill walk out of their class and didn't do so well on their test. Kim comes by and says, you guys are stupid. Tanya handles it 
by walking away with her head down, remembering her brother called her stupid last week. Someone else called her stupid on social media. Her mom grounded her for having a failing grade. Her inner voices are beginning to tell her that she's stupid. And she doesn't even bother to do her homework next week. Jill, on the other hand, immediately rejects the negative comment, tells herself that it's not true, tells herself that she is smart and will do better next time, and gets encouragements from her friends and her peers, and works harder on her homework to get a better grade the next time around, and she ignores the comment that Kim said. Between both of those stories, who would you relate to the most? They both were given the same message, but two totally different outcomes and reactions to it. Remember, it's not what is said to you, but it's how you react. People can be mean sometimes, um, but the best way to handle that is just to not believe and feed into the negative energy or comments. You have to believe in yourself and know you are worth it. You have to ask yourself that when you're feeling down, are you gonna take it and accept it or are you going to fight back and know that it's not true? Everyone battles with self-esteem issues. Even famous celebrities battle with self-esteem struggles. They have money, they're famous, they have influence, and even they have admitted to battling inner thoughts and how they feel about themselves. I want to leave you with one last thought, and it rhymes, so hopefully you can remember it and say it to yourself when you're feeling down. Wherever your attention flows is where your self-esteem goes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Next, we're going to be learning about the brain and self-esteem and how they're connected to kind of fully wrap around our minds with why self-esteem is so important.